India. And there's one thing about India they just can't afford to forget. It's sheer size. India's economic powerhouse is population. Over a billion people. And I think they're all around me now. <laughs> the companies have already spent time and money researching India. But what I want to know is, have they really done their homework? If Marmite doesn't work in India, do you both get the sack? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big gamble. This Marmite, love it or hate it? Will India love it or will they hate it? Marmite is a small brand owned by a big company, the British global giant Unilever. Here are the professional Marmite lovers who want to sell it in India. What we got? Sarnies. Marmite sarnies on a variety of breads. Right. And some toast. Matt Burgess is Marmite's managing director, and this is the marketing manager, Cheryl Culverley. Just 27, Hotshot Cheryl's a former young marketeer of the year. First, they've got a big job ahead of them trying to convert me. Sandwich or toast, or where do you want to start? Uh, I'm definitely a Marmite inexperienced. I want to say I'm a Marmite virgin. OK. You look like you might like that. I'm trying very hard to say, ugh. Someone must like the stuff. It's been around for a million years. Well, over a hundred anyway. What's in Marmite? It's made from the byproduct of the brewing industry. They take the yeast that they've made the beer with and we concentrate that effectively, take out some of the impurities. Bright idea, great way of getting B vitamins into people's diets. But really the moment that Marmite took off in a big way was when it was fed to the troops in World War I. We do add a, a secret recipe. Of though, course. Though. I expected nothing else <laughs> other than a secret recipe that you could possibly disclose. Because no. you'd have to kill me. Yes. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> Unilever don't actually own Marmite all around the world. South African countries have their own versions. So do Australia, New Zealand, where the recipes are slightly different to suit local taste. So, can British Marmite score in India? Unilever's Indian partners don't seem to think so. They've already turned down an opportunity to sell it. The local <laughs> man on the ground has said, uh-uh, mm -hmm. not for me. The Indian market's not right for this, I'm out. And you said, your loss, not mine. Yep. Yes. Wow. They're actually saying we're out because we don't think it's big enough, not because we don't think it will work. But you obviously believe it is big enough. From a Marmite perspective, it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing for Matt and Cheryl's careers too. So, we're going to take Marmite to India. And if Marmite doesn't work in India, do you both get the sack? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big gamble. Wow, that was incredible. The chaps on the ground in India are saying, Marmite in India? No. The UK say yes. And what's more, they're putting their money and reputations at stake here. I can't wait for the results. Let's see how they get on. Mumbai, or Bombay as we used to know it, is India's business capital. There's around 14 million people here, and it's my first visit. And if you think India is all about poverty, think again. It's one of the fastest expanding economies in the world, even in a recession. There are more millionaires per square mile here in Mumbai than anywhere else on earth. It's rising middle classes, 300 million of them, have more and more spending power. And that's good for British companies. Our export trade with India is worth nearly £6 billion a year. There's masses of opportunities here if you're bright in favour. And one of the quickest ways to do this in a brand new market is to learn from other people's mistakes. And also, learn from their successes. The golden arches, Indian style. This is the chicken tiki, the potato patty. Mm. 
very nice. Now that's Indian. There's a slight taste of curry in that. If McDonald's, one of the biggest brands in the world, can adapt their product to fit the Indian market, surely our companies should not rule that out. Marmite's Cheryl is hitting the markets, and this is David Leach, Marmite's export manager. And what do they find gathering dust on the shelves? Not actually dissimilar price to the UK, so it's about 60 cents to be more than the UK. The great thing is, seeing it here just shows that there is a demand for the product. Yeah. If there's no demand, it wouldn't be here. It wouldn't be here. It's not a luxury good, but it's certainly a relatively premium good. It's not something you'd have in your weekly shop, but that's similar in the UK. But it's the entry price, so. It's a big outlay of money to, to try something. Once I've bought it, all right, it's quite cheap to use, but if I don't like it, then that money's wasted. So that is, that is definitely one of our challenges over the next week, is to understand that. But who's buying it? Is it just the odd expat hankering for a taste of blighty? Or is it the Indians keen to have a bit of spread on their toast? Only one way to find out. Bring on a taste test. Do you want to try and try this for us? What do you think, good or bad? Hey, yeah. hey, we got. We what got, about the rest? We, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Another one. Okay. Uh, so not that good. <laughs> All right, one's enough. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. It's good. Nice. I, I hey. think you're too nice to us. <laughs> this is the problem with the consumer groups. No one will ever say this is horrible. So they sit there and go, oh yeah, I'm sure you can see a use for this, and you're like, but you think it's horrible, but you won't say it. So far, we've eaten most of it ourselves. Yeah, I know. Let's go and find more, guys. Guys. Well, At last, Cheryl gets a marketing insight she can actually use. No? Oh. <laughs> they hate it. Eat. Ah! Oh, that is brilliant. And just to finish it off, <laughs> From where I'm standing, it looks like Marmite's going to be a tough sell. So no. Cheryl's got to change the eating habits of a whole nation. You can't give it away. Britain and India do have a lot of tastes in common. Curry, for example. But when it comes to business, it doesn't always change another culture. But there's a high chance that that culture is going to change your business. In Saudi Arabia, for instance, you just can't have female shop assistants. And that makes it just that little bit tricky when you're selling something as intimate as lingerie. When you work within another culture, you can't take anything for granted. What I found out here is that when you're getting married, people come and buy... But I can't see the ivory. No, they don't like... That's the one biggest problem that we have. Spring summer collection from a UK brand in your soft pastel colours, yeah. and the Indian girls are like... I've got brown skin, I want bright, vivid colours, right? Because ivory isn't a bridal colour here, it's more red. Now, that's the kind of merchandise that we'd get in England for Christmas. But, um, but or Valentine's Day. Or for Valentine's, but for, for Indians, that's perfect for the bridal market. And that's not the only difference. Back in the UK, we have January sales. In Mumbai, Dabir has monsoon sales. Also use spreading on sandwiches. Unilever's Indian partner, Hindustan Lever, have already passed on the chance to sell Marmite. It's starting to look as if that was a good call, because so far, no one seems to like it. But Cheryl and David aren't about to give up quite yet. So we're, we're looking at middle to upper middle class mums cooking for the family with kids. Family means everything to mm -hmm. her. Everything that she does for her kids, for her husband, what society thinks of it, that's of the paramount importance to her. So cooking is part of their own self-esteem. The food they produce is the same yeah, yeah, how yeah. good they are as well. Yeah. Because uh, that's what they see the, the, the role is. Yeah. I'm glad he said that, not me. But is so, there an angle here for Cheryl? In the UK, originally, it was launched as a health, a health product. It used to be given out by the NHS to mums. So we are very clear that the reason we are where we are today is because 100 years ago, people wanted to eat this because it was good for them. So mama is very, very low fat. I think it's zero fat, actually, uh -huh. um, and obviously zero sugar. Uh -huh. And I think I'm quite interested to understand how much there is an understanding that actually taking fat out of your diet is a good, is a good thing. The awareness is catching up. Yeah, the awareness is catching up, but when it comes to ghee and butter, no. <laughs> we are not going to take that away from our diet. <laughs> Fine. That's ghee awesome. is clarified butter. No ghee, no Indian cooking. It's chock full of fat, but I'll risk it. <laughs> Actually, it tastes quite tasty. But healthy, no chance. 
So Cheryl's going to have her work cut out in persuading the Indians to change habits of a lifetime. At least now she's got an angle, health. But will the Indians swallow it? Cheryl arranges a proper focus group complete with video cameras and translator so she can eavesdrop on her target audience of Indian mums. They're going to absolutely hate her. It's got a slight bitter taste. She's right. And it's a strange sort of smell. It's not an attractive smell. Children won't eat this. You feel like you're eating medicine, you know? You really have to tell yourself you're eating medicine when you eat this. So here's the problem. It's good for you, but everyone still hates it. But health is definitely on the Indian radar. And today, more than us, the kids are health conscious. They're very mm. particular mm. We saw about yesterday, keeping totally. their physique kids are really health conscious. in good shape. My daughter keeps jumping because she wants yeah. to keep uh, fit. She says, Mom, why are you <coughs> adding so much ghee that's clarified butter on the food? Put yeah, less cream in the food. My son says that... I think I can hear the sound of the penny dropping. There's some sort of line in my head around, um, all good cooks love Marmite. So can you encompass the fact that if you're a good cook, you will love Marmite and almost make people want to love Marmite because it will show they're a good cook. And giving your kids healthy food was so, so important. So all healthy cooks love Marmite. So it's dead easy. All Cheryl has to do now is persuade all these healthy cooks to use an ingredient they can't stand. Marmite has its own troubles. It seems that nobody in India likes it. But Cheryl and David are convinced it can score with India's newly health-conscious mums. And they've had a brainwave. If it won't work as a spread, can it work as a food flavouring? You know, a bit like Worcester sauce. They've roped in a top hotel chef to find out how Indian food tastes with added Marmite. What we want to try and do is, because we don't want to be a medicine, so how do we make a healthy product also tasty? Mm. That's the thing. So today is the tasty. We kind of know how, we, how to talk about health, so it's B vitamins and it's low fat. Why don't we how do we make the it tasty? Excellent. Come on. Time for yet another taste test. Let's hope this one goes better than the last two. In the UK, we spread this on toast. We love it, and we think there's lots of subtlety and lots of clever flavours in Marmite. So what we've asked our chef to do is invent a few dishes with Marmite. And we'd love to get your thoughts on how, how you think they taste. You've got some chili, you've got some coriander, coriander for garnish, some basil. This is all staple Indian fare with an added dollop of Marmite. Okay, now we are very, very, very particular about our curries. This has got some rice. So do they like it? I can hardly bear to watch. I'm really loving the biryani, which is yummy. And it's pretty unique. It's tasting different. It's excellent. It's got that subtle tangy taste, which actually lingers on the uh, tip of the tongue, you know? And it's giving like, mmm. So having tasted this, and if you had a jar at home, you would experiment and try it in yeah, yeah, different yeah, things. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Cheers, guys. In a country that's famous for big flavours, Marmite could end up becoming another way of spicing up your food. But first, Cheryl needs to put Marmite on the shelves, and that's where a distributor comes in. They don't just distribute the goods. They're the people who persuade the shops to buy in the first place. And to do that, they really need to know their market, and of course, what sells. So, what are the chances for a brand new brand? The team are meeting one of Mumbai's leading distributors. Here we have a product which is not going to appeal to at least 100% of the populace. You're going to have perhaps more people saying no than yes. It's a, it's a matter of investment on education, you know, because you're yeah. going to have to educate the Indian consumer. What exactly is this and why should he or she use it? He's not exactly champing at the bit, is he? He knows he won't make a single rupee out of Marmite unless there's a shed load of marketing behind it. So can Cheryl convince him to take it on? For us at the moment, our business plan is, is a significant overinvestment in the brand for about the first three years. We'll look to do one city first. Start from in-store demonstrations, in-store sampling with recipe cards. Move on to leaflets and flyers of recipe cards with a coupon. Then work work all the time with a face, a chef, not quite sure who that might be, just to front the campaign. To kickstart her brand, Cheryl is prepared to plough all her profits back into marketing for at least three years. And that's a smart call. 
To launch a brand new product in a brand new territory, that means investing in the long term. And I'm a bit gutted about leaving India. A wonderful country to visit, but as we found out, not an easy one to do business in. So it's time for our venture capitalists to go back to Blighty and do some serious thinking. So our companies are back home now. It's going to be really interesting to see what have they really learned from their adventures. Last of all, Cheryl and David went to India to find out if the Indians loved or hated Marmite. Do you want to come try this for us? Let's just say it wasn't a roaring success. It's enough. Cheryl realised she had to adapt her product, and she did, as a food flavouring. I'm really loving the biryani, which is yummy. It's like salmon. When I left her, Cheryl was convinced that Marmite could work in India. So, is Marmite going to India? We're going to go. Yeah. We're going to go, and we're going to give it a go. Going to do business in other countries about a lot of money invested in marketing and letting people know that you're actually there. I mean, what sort of cost are we talking about? I think we're talking about something around half a million investment over the next few years to get the brand established in India. Before you start even talking about a return. While it's not Matt's money, his career prospects are seriously on the line. If Marmite doesn't work in India, do you both get the sack? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, what will it mean for you for Marmite to be successful in India? It would be amazing. I think the, the thing that would be amazing is you never, or, or extremely rarely as a marketer, get in your life to create from scratch a brand new brand. We went to India and we said, have you heard of this brand Marmite? And they went, no, nope, never heard of it, no idea what it is. Is it jam, is it chocolate? And the idea that you go in there and you go, right, I'm going to come in here with a product and I'm going to invent a whole new brand for you guys. And in 50 years or 100 years, it might be as important to you as it is to the UK. My God, that would be an incredible legacy. Marmite is a classic case study. You've got a big organisation that understands brands, understands marketing, and has lots of cash. But all the cash in the world won't guarantee that your product hits the spot. The pure taste of Marmite certainly didn't. That gave Cheryl three choices. One, to say forget it, go back home. Two, to make the common mistake people make and not listen to the research and persevere with launching the brand in India as a spread for toast in the morning. Alternatively, adapt her product. And that's exactly what she did. And it looks like it was the right call. Thanks, so much. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. No amount of research on the internet can replace the experience of visiting the country itself. Now when you get there, of course, you might not like what you hear or see. If you ignore it, you could be in serious trouble. If you take it on board and adapt, you could be a big success and the world could be your oyster. <laughs>